probably going to go yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move that we keep all items discussed in non-public, non the minutes of the non-public sealed until such time as a majority of the board feels that it is wise and prudent to unseal them with the exception of, ex of giving the information regarding uh, new hires. I'll second that. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, approval of minutes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move the acceptance of the public minutes dated March 20th, 2018. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, move to schedule business A, fire, new fire rescue station. Good evening, Mike Povero, Eastern Seaboard Construction Manager, Newton Fire Station. Um, really not much to update, schedule's going on. The last meeting I had uh, brought up that we have worked out with the neighbor to go back to the original connect connection for the uh, electric service. We went, met with Unitil this week and that's all done. There's gonna be some paperwork that the town has to sign as far as easements go, but other than that, uh, that has been uh, agreed upon and probably next week, weather permitting, knock on wood, we're gonna start installing that electrical service. Um, you know, we're, we're still on schedule. I, I don't think we're gonna have much of a problem completing the building uh, on the anticipated date, but the exterior site work is probably gonna be a problem because Mother Nature just will not give us a break right now. So I'll keep you updated week to week on where we are on that. Okay. Any questions? Nope. Nope. Yeah, are we, are we too soon to start, th and the fire chief should probably be here, but are we too soon to start thinking about a date for, uh, for open opening? house? Yeah. 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 And you're going to have two openings. You're going to have soft opening and then a hot opening. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, yeah, I, maybe another couple of weeks we can start looking at, like, circles on a calendar when that yeah, may right. happen. Yeah, right, Okay. Anybody else have any questions? The, the only thing I would add, and it's really not a question for the project manager, but uh, speaking of circling dates, now that the town has approved the Warren article regarding <coughs> of real estate, does the board want to start thinking about the process to sell the old fire station? Because it's, it's, probably, it's, it's probably not prudent to do it, uh, um, to wait until they've moved out of there. Because I can tell you, when I moved out of my parents' house, it was a slow move out of the house and there were boxes left behind and I, two years later I still had stuff in there. So if I had known like my parents were going to sell their house, I would have gotten my stuff out sooner. And then we're, we're talking about the town is going to be essentially burning money on a building we're not using. So if we had dates on the calendar where we knew roughly the project was going to be done, enough time for the fire department to move over there, and then we're going to be staging or whatever we're doing to the place to get it ready to sell, might want to start thinking about that. Not that we have to decide tonight. Right. Okay. I think that's a good point. And I, I think if you, again, looked at it on a calendar, I would say not having the fire department in a fire drill, literally a fire drill, to right. get the stuff out of the station, I would say any time after August would be realistic to uh, at least entertain looking at selling that fire station. Or do you have to wait till next year's warrant? We don't now. No. You do not. Because of what the <coughs> people voted on. Right. Okay. People voted on the warrant article that we can, the board can sell, buy and sell property. Okay. Well, I mean, that'll certainly expedite the process. We do the, have to process. present to uh, planning board and conservation and, you know, that 
that's part of the schedule. The in other words, yeah. a lot yeah. of stuff on the schedule, the sooner we start kind of hashing out that schedule, the better. Yeah, so look at August maybe of starting that process. <coughs> um, I, I would think that's realistic. Okay. So if you're out there and the millions of people watching this broadcast <laughs> and, and you're thinking you want to buy an old fire station, you know, let us know. Okay. Get you a good deal. There's no fire pole, though. That's true. They'd have to add their own. Yeah. But. Okay. And what about the unexpended funds from the f new fire rescue station? I think that's bond. mine. That's yeah, yours? I was going to say that's not mine. So, the original fire station, they, do you remember what year it was? The first drawings we did, we asked for 50000 for a warrant article to do the plans. In that account, there's 4000 and some change left over. We like to draw that 4000 out and use it as the project manager needs to fit tricks. for the new station because um, it's just money sitting there that we could actually use. So if it needs to, the board has um, control over that 4000 and I just need a vote to uh, expend the funds or let the project manager expend the funds the way he sees fit, whether it's for the new telephone system, the Enzo system, whatever he needs over there. And then we can close that account. Am I correct, Nancy? Are we talking the emergency management? No, the, the $50,000. Interest? Uh, the $50,000 warrant article that we did the new plans with, the original oh, plans um, for the fire station. I, I believe. Which I think was around 06. Yeah. 06. Um, 05. Oh, five. Yeah. Well, it was the original plans. Oh, way before. That plans never yeah. went through. Yeah, okay. So there's some, ba uh, it's a balance in there of 4,000 and some change. Yep. That we can actually use for the new station. Well, I think that's almost how it's written, isn't it? That what? the funds needed to be used for design or construction Which of the fire station? It will be. Well, no, they will be, but I don't think you have an option of using it anywhere. Right, it has Other to than get that. used there, or right. it just sits in that, it sits in the bank. <clears throat> so can, can I move then to take that four grand left, the, the unspent balance, and move it into uh, the account for construction of the... I think I would leave it separate and not put it into the account, leave it as a separate ledger. Uh, and not blend it into what would be the bond. Would it be easier to come up with the invoice to be paid for the new station? And yeah. that way you keep it separate? Easy yeah, on. yeah, because yeah. that, that uh, you know, I, I don't, <clears throat> don't want to use that for the construction of the station. Right. You know, it's my job to make sure that station comes within budget on what the bond was for. But that would be for unforeseen, as you just mentioned, the phone system, because that wasn't part of the construction cost anyhow probably a good place to use those type of funds. So instead, do we tag our agenda with an item about this amount, and as we get closer to the end of this thing, if there's some peripheral item that... I don't think it's gonna to be to the end, and I don't wanna mire you down. Larry knows what I'm, I'm gonna talk sure. about right now, is the phone system. We, we have a, 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 well, a glitch a with the phone system going on right this minute. Is there still a motion on the table? So we need Actually, to it's, it's the funny. The way, the way I said it was I could motion. Okay. So okay. technically that wasn't a motion. A that was a question about a motion. Okay. Can I just make a suggestion? I didn't research this. I don't know if the selectmen are agents to this, these funds, yeah. if you have the right to do anything. I thought anything. we read that. We said that. I'd have to go back and see how the Warren article was written. And if, if the board has the authority, then I think all they'd have to do is a letter to Joe. He's the trustees hold the money. We give him a bill. He takes out the money and pays the I bill. I think me and right? you read that two weeks ago. I can't remember where. the bottom for and, and the year. number we're looking at here isn't this year's. There's no okay. current town reports up here. Well, I don't think it'll make a difference if we vote on it next week or next meeting, so Nancy can have time yeah, to look like into to it, make sure we're doing it right. It, and quite frankly, I, I, I would prefer to be voting on in actual, can we um, pay for this invoice using this fund rather than can we take these funds and use it to spend on right. it? You, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because I yep. think it was a couple, maybe four years so, ago, I brought this up 
to close the account, let the money go back to the general fund, and I think some of the board members said, let's hold it, we may need it, and so I just want to make sure the wording, so we okay. don't violate anything. Right, yeah. so we'll put it on the next agenda. Sorry, we also need to check and make sure that there's no public hearing requirement uh -huh. to expend the funds. Okay. Okay, okay. anything else on the fire station? Something about a phone system? Say again? Something about a glitch with the phone system? Yeah, not worth talking about in this meeting. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's move over to B. Resident request, clean up from winter storms. Good evening, Joe Simone, Quaker Grove. Just wanted to bring up to the board's attention to see if there was some way that they could put together a uh, put together a, uh, a plan to perhaps help the residents in picking up all the blowdowns from the storm. I know in driving around the town, it look, just looks absolutely horrible with everything on the side of the roads and people's yards and stuff like that. And saying if you know if they, you could come up with some money to do it. I know last time we used uh, we used some funds because we got the money from the state. But if there is some money somewhere we can find, you know, find to do it some maybe a two months down the road or so to give people a chance to get everything cleared up and whatnot. And I think you guys can agree with me that driving around town it just looks horrible, all the stuff that's kicking around and stuff like that. And I think a lot of uh, a lot of times if the residents have a little uh, impetus to get it done, it'll get done, it'll look a lot neater. Does anyone have a dollar amount roughly? Mike? I wouldn't I wouldn't know how, how much it would cost to, to do that. <laughs> I have no idea. Mike, any idea? <laughs> oh, okay. Any, any comments, Mike? I know the budget's pretty tight. <laughs> Joe's right. You drive around town, there's broken limbs and branches and widow makers scattered around the entire town and surrounding communities. On my end, um, we're not going to have the resources to go and do a town-wide cleanup like we did after the ice storm. We were able to do it after the ice storm because it went into a FEMA fund and FEMA re re reimbursed us for that and it was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Thank God FEMA reimbursed us. So we were able to uh, assist the residents in town and everything else to clean up that mess. FEMA, this is never gonna make the uh, FEMA threshold. It just isn't. Um, funds available as Joe asked, there really isn't. I mean, everything in the highway budget is allocated, uh, and my biggest thing is always rebuilding uh, road surfaces during the, the summer. That's if I don't use it up in winter maintenance, snow plowing, then it goes to uh, reconstruction of roads. Um, the budget isn't that big, we expend it all the time. Um, highway block grant. Um, really can't use that funds for that because it's not the reconstruction of an infrastructure. Um, this is more a storm related event and it's just what it is so it's, it's not really going to work. I mean the only thing we can do when we've done it right along is give the residents a place to dispose of this um, and I'm unfortunately behind the season but I have a pile down at the transfer station right now that is a mountain that I have to burn and get rid of um, so we have more storage space for the incoming, because it will happen once the weather gets better. It's, it's building up now. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, and I'm sure it is. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So uh, I have to address that sooner than later, uh, make room down there for the residents to uh, dispose of the debris, the storm debris, brush, trees, branches. I mean, unfortunately, I, I just don't see how we would be able to absorb um, a cleanup. I mean, stuff on the side of the roads, and, and I do have to say this because I already see it starting. Um, there's res residents in town that are jumping the gun. I see them cutting brush and stacking it up alongside the roadway. Um, I, we, there's two highway guys. One's a full-timer, one's a part-timer. And right now they probably have with very little exaggeration, three weeks of pothole work. <laughs> Just more. pothole work. <laughs> right. So, I mean, you, you, you kind of tax, and we were, just because of the weather we had, the, the season we had this winter, we're already taxed at trying to get caught up before we can even think about doing brush work and 
I just, I just don't see it happening, to be completely honest. If you guys come up with an idea or you get some thoughts, I'm more than happy to hear what you have to say, but I don't. I, th I think, you know, I, I don't, I'm not sure the board can do more than encourage people to uh, plan on cleaning up their own areas in the spring, you know. Uh, I just don't see how we can fund any sort of a major cleanup. It looks, it does look awful. Uh, and I know our town, our town's probably one of the, the lesser uh, ones because I drive through other places in both Mass and New Hampshire. They have the same thing going on. You can't, but other than clearing it so the roads are passable. Yeah, my, my, and you hit the yeah. nail on the head. My, my target goal will be safety for the uh, commuter and vehicles. And I haven't, haven't even a count on it, but there was a ton of widow makers that I have to address because that's a safety issue. So those I, I have to take and obviously it will fall on the highway because that has nothing to do with. There's also a lot of low hanging wires that are out there that hook pretty much the telephone and cable. Oh yeah, and we've called them in and yeah. I know PD's called them in. They're, they're, listen, if you're a homeowner and you have a low hanging wire, blow up the phone for the cable people. Call them and call them and call them and call them and call them. You'll get more response as a resident and homeowner and a, a, a payee of that service than we're going to get on the end of our phone calls now. Hmm. Okay, anybody have any other questions or comments? So unfortunately, Joe, it doesn't look very promising right now. He's just not in the budget and the manpower this year. I know, but residents also got to take responsibility for their own properties too. Just like I have trees down in my yard, I got to start cleaning them up now that the snow's gone. Yeah. Almost gone. Yeah, almost gone. <laughs> Maybe you could put something out on the broadcast or something like that, basically saying that the transfer station is open to accept. And I was going to say, that's the one thing we can do is encourage right. people, you know, hey, you know, if you clean up the brush and the dead limbs, you can bring it to the transfer station as long as it meets the um, maximum requirements or minimum requirements. There's a diameter. No, there's uh, a di there's a di di and Jack knows how this works. There's a diameter. Yeah. A diameter for the burn pile. Right. There's a separate pile for things that exceed that diameter based upon our burn permit. So if they have a, I don't know, there was a tree that came down. It's 24 inches in diameter. Yeah. That goes into a separate pile that we deal with separately. We can't burn that. So we do have. I think it is six inches. Our burn pile is six inches or less. We have capability okay. of taking everything though. All different sizes. A, a uh, resident was informed otherwise a couple of weeks ago. It shouldn't be. They can take he any size. No, he was turned down away. There, correct? A resident was turned away a couple of weeks ago for having um, pieces of logs that were about yay big in diameter. He was told that the transfer station, this is why I'm asking and making sure that whatever we have for requirements for the burn permit are met when they bring it. And you're telling me that they can bring any diameter, it's just one pile for something over six inches, under six inches goes to goes the, burn in the burn pile. pile. All right, and I, I just want to make sure that all our residents are aware that we do have that capability. So. Yeah, and we're fortunate we do. I mean, like you said, at least that's the one thing we can offer up to the residents in town. They can get rid of the debris. They just have to find a way of gathering. It's amazing, Mike. I'm getting calls from Southampton, East Kingston, and Kingston. And it's amazing. Wow. Yeah, we don't take out of town brush. <laughs> <laughs> we got enough brush in town right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Diane, can we get that out on the uh, friendly town email about the uh, brush pile? The, the transfer station will be accepting it? You mean the website? Yeah. Right. Well, they, the email we send out to everybody, it's on it, the website. It starts on the, website. Yeah. It starts yeah. on the yeah. website. It starts on the website, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I, one last thing I'll mention regarding this brush, um, and I'll look at it in the next few days. I, I get some time. That pile is getting so big, and we will get an influx of uh, more brush rapidly. I've been burning it the past four years. I might burn and look at the numbers and may have to chip it and get it out of there. Um, again, that's how we dealt with it during the ice storm. We came in twice and shipped it. 
just because of time. You know, I, um, burning's great, but you can't burn it as fast as it comes in. You know, it's, we get all the requirements like everybody else is when we can burn and when we can't burn. So it gets a little bit time sensitive. Just to give you a heads up, if we've got to chip it and get it out of there, we'll chip it and get it out of there. Sounds good. Okay. Do they, I know one time they did come and. They take the chips for nothing. Exactly. That boat has sailed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What does it now cost us a chip? It'll, de it'll depend on how big the pile is. They'll look at it and assess what a day, you know, if they can do it all in a day. If it's not, then obviously <coughs> it's more money. They used to be able to sell the chips to the um, energy companies. Right. But the, that kind of has gone to the, this doesn't, it, I don't I, know. I, won I wonder if the chips could be, they could come in, chip it, and then people in town would be able to take it as mulch. Yeah, no. I, I want it gone. <laughs> Yeah, people, people one, more ba one more babysitting job that, mm -hmm. you know, we got piles of loom down there and there's very few people that come and take the, the compost pile. Right. So one, one more thing, it's a great idea. I didn't know it there just was a compost pile. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the compost you want, Joe. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I wonder how many other people have lived in town. We'll even load your pick, you come down, we'll even load your pickup truck. <laughs> People tend to look for uh, mulch that's painted, yeah. Yeah. so that's yep. like all the rage, so they wouldn't take the natural. There's just sap stuck all over it. Yeah. Okay, any more questions on the uh, cleanup? No. Okay. Well, can I say something? If the, sure. problem doesn't, if the problem doesn't resolve itself, say in six months or so, can we take another look at it? Because then it's really going to get ugly. You can certainly yep. come back to us in yeah. six months and tell us if you still see a problem. Absolutely. I think everyone will see it. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Is there any way of helping some of the elderly people that don't have access to have anybody take care of doing this stuff? Oh, here comes Mike again. I'm, back. I'm not looking, you know, not looking to make work. But I mean, there are a lot of elderly people that they just don't have the means and the wherewithal to do something. The only thing I can offer up, and it's a logistical thing, I know the chief just went through a long period of time uh, on setting it up because they're getting to be much more in demand, is we could use, um, what's the agency up there with the inmates? Sheriff's Department. We've done that before. We've used them a number of times on different projects. I've used them for roadside cleanup. That may be an option that we could do. Um, Thank you. It's an inexpensive way of doing it. Uh, it's great for the towns. Well, there'd have to be a truck. I don't know if I'd give them a loader, because. <laughs> <laughs> but we'd, we'd, we'd have, you know, we'd put a driver in a truck. I mean, that we could supply, and they can just throw the stuff in. But it would be, as you said, a select group of yeah, exactly. residents that really don't have the means. And I use means, not lazy. There's, right. Different Both thing. different sides of that. So, I mean, if you're elderly or don't have the capacity, maybe we could set that up. They could call. I'm not telling you to call Town Hall now to set that up. It's a work in progress. Okay. I, I was. You, you just cho drove the police chief out of the room. <laughs> he, he's making his call now. But the, uh, the, what I was going to say is, is if there are specific elderly people like that and they're hearing this or they're reading the minutes, they can always contact us to see what the options may be, but I don't think we should make an official no, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. official announcement because we could be inundated and we the solution might not work, but if, Correct. if people are hearing this, it doesn't hurt to reach out and see what's going right, on. Right, because also with, with the inmates, depending on the workload, there could be sometimes two, three months before we can even get a couple inmates down here to help. Oh yeah, could so. All right. So we'd have to look into it, find out when they're available, and go from there. I did. He, he got called out, but I, I think the chief has been two months trying to get a work party to do some work that he needs done. So it, it can be a lengthy process. Right. I think the last time we went on to paint the, the building there down at the yard. Uh, That's right. Yeah, they painted it that. It took that us took about three months to get them down here to paint it. Yeah. yeah. But just to answer Joe's question, there, maybe that's an option that could put stuff together. Or we could get volunteers that might want to help the elderly. 
You know, well, not only that, but you also have uh, teenagers that have to do community service. That might be an option also. Yeah, I don't think we've had those in a while, though. Only, only thing is, not to belabor this, but uh, power tools would be a, probably a no-no in those situations. But what, inmates? No, with uh, volunteers. volunteers. Yeah. yeah. What was that? <laughs> that was the cruiser. He had a oh, call. Okay. okay. Anything else on the cleanup? Okay. Well, I guess we're going to skip C for right now. If, uh, if the chief's not back before the end of the meeting, I'll give it a shot, but yeah, skip it. All right, we'll, we'll postpone C until the end. C? Building C review on Eaton Merrimack Road? Yeah, C. Okay, Jack, are you here for something? No, I was just well, it's the liaison, so I don't know what happened. Okay. Yeah, that's why item we, F. Why don't we jump to that so Jack doesn't have to hang around and be bored to death here? Yeah. Yeah. You were going to discuss the, the pilot program or roll it out? What? Yeah, we'll, we'll jump to F. That way we'll do the pilot program commercial trash haulers. Well, I, I guess my question to this is, uh, do we have any commercial trash haulers that have come forward? We have That's one, I believe. Yes, Steve. Is he a commercial trash hauler? He, as far as I know, you, you're, you know more about him. He wants he to be. He wants to be. He's wants a resident okay. with a truck. Yeah. So I, I guess yeah. my, I, I, you've already, it's already, it's going to roll out April 1st. Well, it's April 4th today, a third or whatever it is. So how, how is this going to work? Are we, uh, there was one thing that I, unfortunately, I don't have a copy. It was, it was on the website. It's still it on said, the website. The one that says we're not going to pick up trash from the town of Newton on this? Still out there. But, but anyways. Yeah. There was something in there, and I'm pretty sure I read it, that it, they're not going to, this pilot program is not going to take trash from the residents of Newton. Say that again? That doesn't it, sound right. The website said. Sure, sure didn't say it's only going to take trash from residents? I, that's why I said, where's the trash coming from in this pilot program? Uh, the, it's only coming from new Well, I know residents. that, but that's not, what the, that's not what it said on the website. It said trash will not be coming from Newton, something to that effect. Yeah. That just doesn't sound right. And, and this right. is what I'm worried about, that the, the fellow that wants to do it, he's not a commercial trash hauler. So it, this would have scared anybody else away. Like, let's say that if I wanted to haul trash, that word commercial would have said, hey, Jack, you can't do it because you're not a commercial trash hauler. So yeah, I would, you I would have, be. pardon if, me? If, if you wanted to do it, you yeah. could be. We, okay. we actually put a proposal out there. We wanted anybody in town who wanted to take part in the pilot program. But, but this little person has allowed commercial one. trash haulers. Well, so you would be commercial once you started accepting right, okay. money to do something. Okay, so yeah. how is this going to work? How is that individual going to go out and get customers? What is he going to charge? Not you, our. Pardon me. Not our. Not our questions. Not our. So what are we going to charge these individuals for using our transfer station and picking up trash? Something we have to. Are we have thousand dollars a year. A, we haven't come up with a fee yet. Yeah. Okay. You All have right. a permit. Yeah. You you said that you're going to have a permit fee of five hundred dollars payable within. Ten working days of the lottery, we'll, 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 but, and, and that was part of the yeah. proposed right. policy. But not voted on. Right, not voted. Not on. voted yet. Nope. I'm it, just it, giving you what the. Yeah, it, it's a draft, and that's because you needed a number in there. Yep. But the idea, because it's a pilot program, is that when we determine, you know, what it, what the actual costs are involved, which you're not going to know until you start doing this pilot program. Do, I mean, then you would adjust whatever the costs are so that they would be um, covered. covered by the permit fees. Okay. So that there's no cost to the town or the residents directly from okay, that. For the, so that, that, whoever it is, are people going to have a fee, an annual fee? Is Essentially, that, it'll be a permit fee, okay. yes. Right. And uh, what are those people going to charge the residents? That'll be up to them. If it, that's between them and the their customer. More, so it's not going to affect April 1st. You've got a lot more work to do, and I assume. Right. Yeah. You know, is that is that way I'm reading? I mean, I don't see a full plan that says <coughs> we're going to require we're going to require insurance and all the other things that go along with it. So yeah. the original April 1st date, correct me if I'm wrong, was 
when uh, we initially put out the request and we only had the one response. Mm -hmm. So we pushed, we pushed the date a few weeks to see, because right, uh, yeah. there's at least one individual who expressed mm -hmm. an interest to me, but it sounds like they didn't, you know, you, I couldn't sign up for them. I told them to come down here and sign up, so they obviously didn't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's April 1st is, is an old plan. The, the idea was once we had our pilot program participants, which it sounds like we only have one right now, then we we're going to start to uh, vote on and be more specific about some of these elements. And in, in, in this one here that's, that's, that was downstairs, I think I made a copy of this while I was shoveling that weekend of voting. It says refuse and, and deposit of that. It doesn't say anything about uh, um, recycling cardboard, uh, cans, It and says water. men, uh, the draft version of the revised policy mm -hmm. says recycling is mandatory okay. for cardboard, is that, glass. Is that available to anybody like me? Could I see, is that draft available or? Uh, I don't know. It was on the it website. Works. I took it down because of the um, deadline had been reached. Okay. Right. I can republish it. Right. Basically what it says it says this pilot program is not for residents to have their household refuse picked up. Right, not in not words, for well, residents. In other words, okay. it's this pilot program is for a commercial trash hauler yeah. to go out and solicit people and mm -hmm. say, hey, I'm going to pick up your trash for X amount of money yeah. and I will take it to the transfer station. But I can only take it if you're a Newton resident. That's what that says. Read that again because I thought it referred to it says not. Newton residents. No, it's this pr pilot program. Yeah. Okay. The pilot program is for a commercial person mm -hmm. to yeah. go out and solicit a resident to take their trash to the dump. This is not for <coughs> us okay. to go to the resident and pull the trash for them. Okay. okay. Does that make more sense? The, now? Yeah, the wording is like. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. very <laughs> hard to word it because yeah. of. It, it was if it you is. if you read it and. Um, the people, some of the people, I, I can't tell you how many people have come into the transfer station and said, we're going to have trash pickup. I think I told you that the last time I was here. Because mm -hmm. they're reading these things and that's the way they're interpreting it. That, geez, I, right. Yeah. And I, and whoever's ever called me, I've yeah. explained it to them yeah. several times. Yeah. So, I mean, I can't reword it. I don't know how to reword it any yeah. simpler. So, Diane, yeah. I, I, I did find it. It's yeah. still on there. It yeah. says, which would allow commercial trash haulers to pick up bagged Newton, New Hampshire residential refuse and dispose of them at the transfer station. So, Newton trash. But that, but that, which she just read was on there also. That's why it's yeah, very that's confusing. All she's reading the, yeah. she, I read yeah. piece of it, yeah. she was reading the right. rest of it. Yeah, yeah that, I couldn't find that today. I didn't find, couldn't find in, it In the online. search box, type the word <coughs> pilot. Pardon me? In the search box on the website, yeah. type the word pilot. Yeah. And it'll pull up this document. Okay. Anyway, so this is going to start when we have to decide. Yeah, we have to decide. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And, and the announcement said it would likely. Likely. Yeah. Okay. Because we weren't sure. Mm -hmm. We did extend at some point because we did only have one interested party, and we wanted to give others an opportunity to. Sure. Okay. So when will the final, when do you guys think you're going to have a final plan to implement this? It sounds, it sounds pretty vague right now. Yeah, I mean, the reason it's on the agenda is to discuss that tonight. So who knows, by the yeah. time this meeting ends, maybe we will have, yeah. have less vagueness, but, um, or maybe we, we won't. But that's why it's on the agenda, sure. is to okay. discuss it. I guess those are my questions. Can I bring up one thing about the transfer station while I'm here? I, I know I'm not in the agenda, nope. but uh, just to talk about the sets of, is that, no, that, is that okay? You know, just, well, he's just uh, well the, we, uh, Pete and I last Friday put one of the sets, of, the new sets of steps in. The people that saw them in the last couple of days loved them. They thought they were a nice job. The only issue we have, and Nancy brought it up that nobody thought of, we have two sets of stairs. So we only have one set up only because Pete and I have been going through trying to, trying to rearrange the place because you have to have room to get in there and pack things down and so forth. So we haven't put the second one out. But and Nancy uh, told Pete that we can't move that. Our whole intention to have two was to take that second one. The first one you come into the transfer station, 
That's pretty permanent. That's going to stay right there because that dumpster is always there. Then we have another three containers that we hope that we would move it as we need it. If you need it in this one here, you know, if, if the if the uh, car, the car, the uh, bulk gets filled up and we need another container, we'd move that con the uh, the stairs over there. But according to Nancy, we can't move it unless the building inspector comes down and checks it out. That's what the building inspector told me. Every yeah. time it gets moved, it needs yeah. to be re-inspected because so, it may not be so, level. So, or so, so when he was down inspecting the stairs, I said, "We need your home phone number." <laughs> and I was not joking. I said, you know, we, there's going to be many, many times. We don't know when we're going to move that thing. If it gets filled at 1 o'clock, we want to be able to. The whole thing is the convenience of the, of the, uh, <laughs> the townspeople, you know, to make it easy. So I'm kind of in a bind here. I'm not sure uh, where, where we go from here. He said, gee, what do we do? We just leave one there and we, we can't move it? Well, can we set the two sets up at two, du two dumpsters? Yeah. And I don't know why I didn't say this earlier. Mike's in construction too. Why can't we open the back of the dumpster? Because we do it on my job sites all the time. Let the residents walk into the dumpster, load it from the front to the back, then close the door. Then we use the machine to top them off. They it's couldn't even easier than the stairs. They, they couldn't close those doors. Number one, we have to close <laughs> it with the Kubota. That's how bad they are to close. There's no way in hell you could one person could close it. Take, well, you do it at the end. Right? Yeah, you don't do it. And, yeah. yeah, you don't close them until well, you close them at the end of right, each night, yeah. so nobody goes in them. But yeah, yeah. When the dumpster's full, close enough to the back, then you close the door. Then you just use the machine to throw the stuff over the top and top it off. Yeah. Well, what, what, what we did, we tried that once, I think, uh, about a year ago, and everything we kept on ended up on the ground because we, like today, we have three people there. You can't possibly run it with three people. It's. it's all those people over there dumping things that you're doing your other job and it just can't you can't take care of it you know? can we do this uh, yeah. thursday night yeah. you guys are open until 6 45 right what time does ron typically count, or would it be sam that was down there ron no ron ron there. was down there well, so yeah. can ron stop over there at six o'clock and can everybody put their heads together and figure out a way we can make this work because you you know you said it half yeah. jokingly, but you can't call them every time you need to move that. Right, and exactly. It, right. It seems it seems reasonable to me, and and I don't know without talking to a building inspector, but it seems reasonable to me that you can move a staircase and do all that stuff. But maybe if everybody just puts their heads together, we can at least no, he told me narrow down right. the problem. Nothing much about it. You move it with the Kubota, it has to get inspected. Well, you mentioned that sometimes moving it could weaken mm -hmm. the yeah. nails or whatever that's holding it together, so, and it's a liability. So I guess what I'm getting at is, uh, without him in the room, we're not going to get anywhere close to solving know, the yeah. problem. But if, if you, if, if you, you I'm, I'm not saying you guys yeah. are incorrect, but let's have all the the people together talking and find out exactly because maybe it's a small fix, but. Tonight we're not going to be able to solve yeah. it. We, we, we had those. We had those built when we Pete and I talked to that gentleman, uh, Steve Lee. We made sure they were strong enough the way they're built. That we picked them up Friday. Had no problem moving it. They're, they're perfect to be able to move. But it's a uh, either that or we build more steps. I don't know. But uh, yeah. Again, we're trying to be uh, uh, to um, yeah. be yeah. convenient for the townspeople. But you know. So. Anyway. Yeah, I'll come in Thursday night. Talk to Ron too. Yeah. Yeah. You're in construction. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think that's it for me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Joe. I, I think I may have asked this question before, but why did this uh, pilot program ever come to fruition for whatever reason? Why did or did not? Why did? Why did it come Why up? did it? Because yes. it was a Warren article last year in the Voters said, yes, please move forward. Oh, it was a Warren article. I, okay, I thought so. It was a confusing Warren article. It was, okay. It was confusing, well, but it was. When all said and done, I'm going to just bring up the fact that, I mean, isn't the state, couldn't the state come down and close our, our transfer station at any time no, because we didn't do something right way back when? Isn't there some open issue that way? They could I, shut us down? I don't believe so. It's a transfer station, not. The transfer station. Right. Yeah. The trash doesn't stay there. It's transferred right out of there, so I don't okay, think they'd well, be able okay. to close it well, down. In any event, but are we opening ourselves up to a lot of liability by allowing commercial people to come in? Well, there, there's limitations. Now, the word commercial is a broad term. It really just means anyone who's in business to do 
I just think it's okay. a bad president. To now, start and out. the proposed policies that were drafted for this are designed to try to look out for the town's best interests, mm -hmm. such as limiting the size of the vehicles that are allowed within the transfer station. I, I just think, you know, knowing how that transfer station works, you get a commercial vehicle like that. I don't know if he's going to use a pickup truck. But that's now, going to an example is like crazy. You, you wouldn't no have bigger one than of your these, truck. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm serious. It Ooh. wouldn't be any Pick bigger than only. your truck. Okay. Yeah. yeah, what was it, yeah. class three? Yeah. Class two. Class two, Ooh, <coughs> like 3,500 tons or something like I that. Still think so it's, it, it's yeah. not um, these big, okay. um, you know, people, I still think it's a people bad standing idea. on the back of the garbage yeah. truck sort will, of thing. And I will put forth the warrant article next year to try to overrun this because I think it's just a bad precedent to set. I think you're wasting a lot of time on it for no reason. That's my opinion. Well, that's why it was a Warren article to find out, do you want us to spend the time on it? And the people voted to say yes, they did. I, I, because um, I, I want to add this to Joe and make sure you're aware of it, Joe, you can tell other people. Right now we have a state line waste management picks up trash in town. There's a, they have 110 customers, I called them the other day. Curbside pickups $38 a month. If you rent a container, it's $40 a month. And they pick up everything. The nice part about then, I'm going to stress that to the, to the selectmen again. They do not take their trash to the transfer station. They take it out of town. So if people want to use them, they're available now. And to have a pilot program where they're going to utilize our facility, to me it's a no-brainer. We, we say, I don't think this was, at least I wasn't aware that the, the state line now, waste management was a, available when we were talking about this as a Warren article, what, a year and a half ago last year. <clears throat> That's an out. And the nicest part about it is, people, the trash does not go to the dump. It goes out of town. <coughs> Every time a vehicle goes out of town, it saves the transfer station money. Thank you. Unless it's recycling, because uh, if the recycling were to come into our transfer station, that's actually bringing money to us. It does not. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, anything else? Yeah, I think we need to uh, kind of move on <laughs> rock and roll with this thing rather than having it a continual agenda item my my thing would be we have we have a volunteer for the pilot program we have a proposed pilot program policy and i think when next we discuss this subject we ought to ask the participant in the pilot program to come before us and basically say this is what I'm going to do, and this is how it lines up with your pilot program and, and that sort of thing, which I think was a logical next step for us. And, I, and again, to the people who are here and watching on TV, this is a pilot program. I can't stress that enough. Mm -hmm. No one's decided to make this a permanent program yet because we frankly don't, we, we guess and we think that there might be negatives, but we also guess and we think there might be positives, so a pilot program would would kind of confirm things either way, so. Okay, so, <clears throat> yes. Before we ask somebody to come in and speak to us, we need to adopt something. We have, there's a fairly lengthy um, policy that's been developed and this board has never adopted it. They've never critiqued it. We need to have, I mean, it's do we have raise a cut before the force to expect somebody to come in and say how they're going to interpret what we isn't a legal document yet. Right at the moment, it's only a draft. I think it's from, we looked at it in, in, a, in a former meeting, so I'm wondering which, which meeting, maybe we can figure out which meeting and we can pull it up and adopt it. Give me one minute and I'll put it out there for sure. you. I have no problem with adopting it how it was written. I didn't see anything adopting it for the pilot program. Again, not to carve it in stone, but uh, right. it can be can revoked way, at any time. Exactly for the purpose, <coughs> for the purposes we need. I think tonight we should vote on yeah. on whether to adopt it. So, so. I mean, the only thing it sounds like, uh, you know, I think we talked about waiving the fee for the pilot program because of the fact that we don't want anybody to invest right. and then find out six months later that 
they can't do it anymore. Well, yeah, we, we had discussed yeah. the pilot program only being right. three. <clears throat> right. Four or six, three or six. We're, we're not but even we, sure we, how but long we have, we, we Yeah, we, we need to okay, do have you have a lock certain things. That I just don't have, have it in front of me before I okay. commit. And we need the input on the side of the transfer station from the transfer station manager as to how he will handle it at the transfer station itself. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and any adoption we would do tonight is, is like I said, only enough to get us started. Right. And it's, it's, a, it's a moving target based on what we learn. So I think... Uh, as, as soon as, uh, I haven't read it since that last meeting, so in, as soon as I give it a 30 second read, I'm gonna make a motion. Okay, it's in your folder. For tonight. Tonight, proposed transfer station policy update. At least that's what I found. <coughs> I'll put it out on the other place too. Okay, I get it, thank you. <coughs> I will move that we adopt the prescribed procedure as a as the guidelines for a pilot program for commercial trash hauling. So I'll, I'll second for discussion. Uh, <coughs> number two, we have to cross out because that's the fee, five hundred dollars. Other than that, I don't see any issues with what we're planning for the pilot purposes. I would say rather than crossing it out, say. A motion to waive that. Uh, right, I was just gonna say, why don't we adopt it and then make a motion to waive the fee for the pilot. So uh, my second is still good. How long does the pilot program mm -hmm. for? That's the another motion. <laughs> what was that one? Okay. Length of program. Oh, we, yeah, we don't know what that is yet. All right, any, any discussion on the motion? No. Okay, and, and in case um, anyone needs a reminder, these items were also um, sent to the transfer station manager for his feedback, mm -hmm. and there were some revisions made to them based on his feedback. Correct. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Now I ask, Mr. how long is the pilot program for? What was that? How long is the pilot program running for? Uh, let me continue to make motions. I would move that for the pilot program, we uh, waive the fee for the permit. Second. Discussion? Okay, the, <coughs> the fee is just until the pilot program is over, then once we... Right, right. Okay. so it's just pilot program, we're going to waive the fee. Okay, any other d discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Now, Mr. Chairman, I would move that the pilot program lasts for a period of three months. A just, second just so for you know. discussion. I just want to say, it, it may take one, two, or three months before the um, participant even has I an just, opportunity to bring. I'm just putting a number out there I, and people I, can work on that later. I'm just thinking maybe if we said up to six months or something to that effect, we can still say after three months or four months that it's not working, let's end it. But well, we, we had already determined that the, at the, I think it was the last meeting, that the, pilot program, we were going to extend the well, application time. Well, December 31st of this year. Excuse me? December 31st of this year. And I think that, I think that's when it would expire. We, we had said at the last meeting that we were extending it, the application period, with the understanding that that would mean that it would have a June 1st start date. So if we start on June 1st, it would, six months would give you to December 1st. I just think six months of somebody making money not paying the town, I'm just not for that. If I was doing this myself, 
I'd already have my customers lined up ready to go. So I think three months is plenty of time. Yeah, my, my, my thing would be is as soon as they're standing up here and telling us they're ready to go, the three month clock starts, you know. For us to say tonight we're gonna start June 1st or whatever it is, uh, they might not be ready. You know Ex what I mean? So, yeah, exactly. So if they're standing up here and they're telling us they're ready on whichever date, bang, three months. Then I'd be I okay agree. with that. Yeah. So your motion, Jim, I think is, is still a good one if we were just to say, you know. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not when giving a start date. Ready. I'm yeah. 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 just saying yeah. that the, the pilot program shall last for three months. Yeah. And I'll, <laughs> second, I'll second that. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So just a, one final comment. Remember, this is more for the people out there. Um, this is something that at the end of three months, we will be evaluating this, taking into account any major increases that we see in tipping fees and hauling fees. Um, offset by any potential increases in recyclables that go, that go through and the quality whether or not they're <coughs> before we say that yes we're going to make this a full-time program. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Let's so I just as a follow-up so I think the the next time the board wants to see um, Steve. Steve here presenting uh, what he's ready to do, right? Right, the next agenda? Yeah, two weeks. Okay. All right, let's move back to, well, uh, let's jump up to uh, C, Building Review, 8 Merrimack Road. Chief? And, Excuse me. Thanks, Jack. Hi. Hey, Jack. And I'll yeah. just, uh, I just want to kick this off really quick because the Chief and I have talked about this. This is, we've talked about this a little bo bit before. This is a is a small construction project which I think is a critical need over there for the police department. I, you know, the chief has done some work on this which I think is what all of us want any department head to do where he's pursued, you know, uh, the donations, he's pursued, you know, doing work in-house and he's now got a set amount that he'd ask the board's approval to invest in this but I think for a, a critical need for what they do over there. He'll tell you about that. I think we need to get behind it. And also, as we know, the, um, the chief has been totally transparent with the building department. So the building department did come over there and work with him. So he's gonna do permitted work like anybody else in town would need to do. But that also goes with it a couple of items with some uh, older non-compliant issues over there that the uh, code enforcement's working with us on, so we need to consider those as we go down, as we go forward with this, but otherwise I'll let you do it. Um, good, afternoon, good evening, uh, Mike Jewett, uh, Police Chief. Um, as we discussed before, uh, the project that I'm trying to do at the PD uh, was you know, removing, moving some stuff around to make some more room to utilize the space that we have. Um, one of the current needs that we have is a changing area for the officers when they come in. Um, right now, we don't have storage for the uniforms or for um, them to change. I mean, they can use a bathroom, that type of thing, but it's not an area where they can leave their personal belongings and, and hang them up inside of an area that's secure. Um, currently, a lot of the officers come into work in uniform. They go home in uniform. Uh, they don't change. Um, they're in their personal car in a uniform. Uh, I'd rather see them changing at the PD if possible. Um, we have a small garage uh, that has been that hasn't been utilized properly. Um, we've used it for dry storage. Um, what I, ultimately what I'm asking for is uh, to get some building material to separate that garage. Um, and by doing that, that would give me a male and female changing area. Um, and also uh, that would give me a, a sally port. And what a sally port is, is a place where we can drive in when we have an arrest. Uh, we bring them in and then we can bring them directly into the booking room. Uh, so it's solving a few problems at once. Um, this is something I've been, you know, something that I've been looking at for years. Our booking room currently is in the hallway outside of the office's room. Um, and it's, you know, the, the standard width hallway, uh, so with the booking bench sitting in it. So it's not the safest thing for the offices to be trying to book somebody and take a photo. And it just, it, it worked because that's what we needed. 
um, but we have the space in there. If we can make this project happen, it would we'd be able to utilize it more um, and give the officers a changing changing spot, give us a booking room, uh, and it would give us the um, you know the opportunity to have the off the arrestee secured inside of a room rather than having them in a hallway. Um, I did have a building inspector come in the other day. I just wanted to, I walked, walked him through and explained to him the project that I was looking to do. Um, he pointed out a few things that he, you know, if, if we were going to do it, you know, besides the building permits, of what he was looking for. Um, some of the stuff is fire rated doors, fire rated sheetrock, uh, that kind of stuff. What I think you guys have on your laptops is the list of uh, materials. Uh, what I did was I went onto the Home Depot's website. Uh, and I looked at it except for the two interior doors. I went with a company that we had ordered the doors for originally, uh, back when we first did the PD. Um, I came up with the total, um, and that's with me doing a lot of the work. I've got a couple of the guys that were builders uh, prior to law enforcement, um, and then you know it's, I'm going to reach out to some of the builders that we have in town and see if they can give me a few hours here and there and to get it done. Uh, so I'm looking, the <coughs> cost that I have there doesn't include any labor. Um, and I'm still working, trying to grab more donations um, and that type of stuff. So, um, I mean, I can go down each one if you guys want, um, but I mean, that's, that was the cheapest I could get out of it. Um, and you know, like we had said, there's a few things uh, on there that the building inspector is going to be looking for um, that weren't anticipated in that list. And that's that little footnote down the bottom of what you guys have. All right. All right so you said something and I just need clarification. Yep. Okay. A um, couple meeting or so ago, we were discussing the records room. Correct. That was going to be moved up and booking room is going in there? Correct. Yep. So the Okay. So you mentioned booking room now and when you were talking about dividing for the, and I wanted to make sure that we're still talking booking room <coughs> in the yes. records room. Yep. So the records room okay. uh, is is 90% moved. It's take me a little bit because those files have got some weight to them. Um, that records room is going to be transferred to the booking room. In order to do that, I need a fire rated door to go from the office space to the garage. That's one of the unanticipated costs that I, you know, until yep. the building inspector saw it. Um, so yeah, that will still definitely be utilized. That sally port will be the garage coming in. And then there was a small garage next to it that I can't fit a car into because the Ceiling height is low and the width of the door is too small. Okay. Uh, so we're still talking the same space. I'm not creating more. Um, it's just all tying together. Um, okay, so and one more clarification, please. Um, you mentioned it was used for dry storage, this space. Yep. So what are you using for dry storage now or plans for dry storage? So just it didn't have a lot of stuff in it. It was kind of a catch-all. Um, that stuff has moved out to one of the main garages um, where we, at one, that's where accreditation required us to have a oversized, basically, lack of better words, a chicken coop that's out there that we house bicycles and that kind of stuff. That side of the garage is now storage. Okay. Uh, so we have, you know, we have the tires in there for the cruises and, you know, evidence stuff that comes in that's too large to go in the building. Uh, so the stuff that was in that side garage is now in that garage. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, the chief took me through a tour and what he wanted to do, and it, it was all pretty reasonable. No, I, I totally understand and get that. <coughs> I just wanted to make sure I understood, you know, booking room was still booking, mm -hmm. booking room or going yep. to be mm -hmm. booking mm -hmm. room, and what the plans were for the dry storage if yeah, it no, wasn't being all, used there. All understandable. Uh, but yeah, no, this, I mean, the whole project when it's done, and I want to get it done as quick as I can. Uh, I honestly think that it's, it's going to make a big difference with the offices that are there. It gives them that more space, gives them that personal space, uh, and it gives them a safer booking area. Now, have you called any of the area lumber yet? Uh, I've talked to Johnson Lumber in, I think, Salisbury. Uh, that's who I think we originally got some of the stuff from. That's who I reached out to. I reached out to Home Depot. Uh, I was going to go down to Jackson Lumber in Amesbury. Um, right, but if you talk to like CP Lumber in Southampton and maybe East Coast Lumber, a lot of well, times I they'll give us... certainly can. Um, I haven't gone to them all just because I wasn't sure if we were able to get the project started. Uh, then once we can do that, I'll do it for Right, what I'm saying is what they'll do for a town sometimes, they'll donate it at their cost. Sure. Not, uh, so it'll bring the cost yeah, down. That's what I'm trying to work with Home Depot right now to see if they'll give it to me at their cost. Right. Okay. Yes. Um, you have two doors listed. 
and you mentioned that two doors need to be changed. Is that four doors or is it? So the two doors up the very top, the two anterior doors? Right. That would be for the changing rooms, how you would enter into oh, each okay. one of those. So those are those. And then the two steel doors that I have listed down in that footnote, that's right. the one going into the booking room where there's currently no door at all. And then the other one goes from Sally Port to the garage. Um, to have that up to compliance, that's supposed to be a steel door. Right. Okay, so, th so you're, putting, you're putting in a total of four new doors. Correct. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion. Sure. To allow the police chief to expend the 1880 out of general funding to do the projects to upgrade the police department. I'll second that with a uh, change general government and buildings, right? Yeah. General buildings, right. Yeah. Okay. And the number is $1,880? <coughs> Correct. Right. Not $18.80. $1,880. I won't get much done with that. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank I you. apologize that I had to run out earlier. Like I said, I've told you before, I may not have any time to help you, but I've got a garage full of tools if you want to borrow them. I definitely appreciate it. I just don't want any red stuff on them when they come back. That's all. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Chief. Thanks, Chief. Okay, let's move down to D, Selectman Liaison Assignment. I know I've, I've talked to people, everybody's had their own opinions and ideas, but me personally, I'd like to just keep everything as it is. And the thing about it, it's been working. Everybody's got good rapport with all the department heads that, that we've been working with. Well, with the exception, you're gonna have one to, to the building department. Right, we were talking about adding one to the building department. Building department? Uh, we've, we've never had building a building department. Or you mean Ron Lemire? And right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which why we would, would be interested in doing that one. Sure. Thursday night, you can start. How, how about we give Larry the transfer station and I take the building department? Nah, I know more about the building department. <laughs> how many times do I set foot at the transfer station? For the last month, I've seen you there a lot. Yeah. Right. However, and it'll be another three years. If I might suggest, maybe Mr. Barrow would like the transfer station since he did campaign on comments regarding the transfer station. Uh, no, thank you. I'm, uh, I'm still going to look into things as a selectman, but I, no. Okay, does anybody have any other ideas besides continuing as we are? Or? I think if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But me as a liaison with the transfer station is broke. It's my point. We need somebody who can actually be a little more effective. So let me, uh, let me uh, propose this. I'd take the transfer station. I'd still like to continue my rapport with the police department, though. So I'll do, I'll do two uh, liaisons. Well, three, because I have rec as well. I don't have a problem. Conservation? Oh, it's stewardship. Stewardship, right? Oh, yeah, four. So wow. tack it on. So I I would do I have conservation. Right, he has stewardship. So I would do PD transfer station rec stewardship committee. I don't have a problem doing that. And really, the department has oh, we, do we, not we, have we. to accept us. That's been past policy. If they don't want a liaison, we don't, really don't give them one. Well, that's department heads that are our employees. I would right. would say that that's not true. If it's an elected official, different story. I, I think a lot of the department heads have enjoyed having liaisons. Right, right. One phone call type situation. Yeah. You know. uh, Jim's planning board. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was just elected vice chair. <laughs> All right, so Jim would be planning, <laughs> planning board in <laughs> fire department. So Lisa, you would have nothing. Right. No, well, I, have, I have uh, conservation. conservation. Yeah. Right. Yes, right. I have conservation. And then Bob, you have highway, and you have the construction project, right? And Larry would have building. Works for me. So Larry's going to be a liaison to for the building. Yeah. Building. Okay. Maybe we haven't voted on anything yet. 
Because you can have that many, and I can back you up in the transfer station if you want. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really um, when you think the the transfer station, or when you think of all these four, as long as nothing hits on the same day, I'm okay. You know what right. I mean? But it's it's mostly just it's whose whose phone number you call first. I think is. Does is anybody want to be on the cable committee? I can take the, you when cable? does the cable committee meet? meet Wednesday night. <coughs> Wednesday nights? We meet the third Wednesday of the month at okay. Sergeant Woods. Third Wednesday I can do. Good. You sure? Because you have your... That's the fourth Wednesday. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why I said the third I can do. That would be good. So, Diane, if you could just uh, send me info on that. So, you know, an Outlook invite would be great. Thank you. Don't be late, you might miss the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> they don't go that long. So let me do this, I'll do it slowly as a very complicated motion. Oh, but, wait a minute, let me, but before you do that, yeah. you have enough with the police department, recreation, stewardship. If you want, I'll, I'll add the transfer station on the mine. Because I don't, really don't have a lot to do with the road agent. He basically is, self fund self you know. So if you want I'll I'll take the transfer station. That's fine with me. I, we, I can't see you being buried with four different things. That's fine. And I'm down there every week anyways. Appreciate it. Yeah. See which would make you more effective as a liaison than me. Right. And the road agent, like I said, he's basically he's self sufficient. <coughs> so. All right. So based on that Again, I'll do this slowly. I would propose that uh, Selectman Doggett remain as the ex officio to the planning board and the liaison to the fire department. That Selectman Gagnier remain as the ex officio to the conservation commission and a liaison to the, actually it would be an ex officio to the cable committee, right? That Selectman Chairman Donovan be the, um, Highway Department and Transfer Station Liaison, that I be the ex officio to the Rec Commission and the uh, liaison to the Stewardship Committee and the Police Department, and Selectman Foot would be the liaison to the Building Department. Did I forget anything, Larry? That's it. it can be liaison to the EMD. <laughs> well, I'm also the liaison for the, uh, yeah, the Fire Department, but that's gonna end in a couple months yeah. anyway, yeah. so. Okay, so Jim's the liaison to the fire department? Yes. Yep. He, 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 fire I'm the liaison building. to the fire and rescue building. Oh, fire project. Okay. The project. The project, right. right. Yes. Yeah. Second. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. And so Larry just has the building department, right? That's yes. Yeah. yeah, just the building. <laughs> We're going to start them slow, see how it works out. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, let's go down to E, Policy Bef Committee proposal. Before we do that, really quick, I hate to do this off topic, but it'll be a quick one, I swear. Okay. I've been reading some news and stuff about other boards in the state, and I think uh, since we've just kind of started a new board here, I think it's worth a kind of a reminder that conflicts of interest do exist in our world. And we all know that, we've all been through training and stuff, so I think we need to, to kind of re-commit uh, ourselves to identifying those and, and doing what we can so they don't exist. I, for me, a conflict of interest kind of simply defined as something that is uh, something that would be of interest to my family or my finances or something like that. If I see, if I identify a conflict within myself, if it's a non-public meeting, I'm gonna leave the room. If it's a public meeting, I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna sit in the audience. Mm -hmm. And I, I would just ask that the board, which I know you'll say yes to this, but I just wanna mention it again. I, I would just ask the board do the same. And also, if I were to identify a conflict of interest with one of my fellow board members, Everybody knows that it's just me doing what I believe is in the best interest of the town and the board 
and it's not me looking to embarrass anybody or anything like that. But that's all I wanted no, to say. Uh, yeah. That person might not think that it's a conflict for somebody else. Right, exactly, and that's why, that's why I bring it up, and it's not my intention to embarrass or anything like that. <coughs> but I will, I, I will bring it up, and I ask that the board would do the same for anybody else yeah, on the board. The lawyer, right? so, I agree. Yeah. But that's it. Okay, oh. yeah, we've talked about that before. Yeah. Okay, now we'll jump to the policy committee proposal. So, so this, I, I sent this out. That's Matt's document. Uh, about a week ago, these are just my, my thoughts on it and what I would propose and just to get your feedback as the board and see if you want to use any of it. Uh, hopefully everybody got a chance to read it so we don't have to go through it now. But I, I do believe the policy committee, uh, and I'm f unfortunately there's only been two of you for I think two years now or something like that, three years? Three years, but there can only be two of us. Right. Because then it's a quorum. Right, exactly. And that's why I mentioned in here one to two. But the uh, policy committee, I think, I think having a committee of two people is a lot for two people to take on. And I'm hoping with this proposal we can expand the committee in such a way where we have <coughs> extra hands with, uh, with the select board members not taking all of the responsibility to get everything done where we can kind of spread out the work but so that that was my reasoning here <coughs> if selectman gonier and i were reviewing every town policy police fire what have you this might make sense however the police department is responsible for maintaining and updating their policies. Right. The fire department, the same way. We have very few town-wide policies that the, the selectmen oversee the actual in edit editing of. Therefore, quite honestly, Ms. Mrs. Gonier and I, this is not how we work. Um, we get together when somebody says a, a policy needs to be corrected or changed or what have you, and we made a couple last night. Um, but it's the two of us thinking together, playing off each other, coming up with the proper verbiage. When you start to get into what's described here as a policy commission, you end up with the, the body that created an elephant and called it a horse. You just, I mean, you, you, you end up with a cast of thousands, or probably about 15 or 18. You'd need 50%, 51% of the people to make a quorum. It just, right at the moment, things are working. Why, you know, this is a lovely solution looking for a problem that we don't have. I mean, I, I personally don't have a problem with having more people on the board because even though the police department has their policies and the fire chief has his policies and the road agent has his policies, our policies supersede their policies. Correct. So if we're doing town policies, I think that the police and the department head should have input on it. Well, it's not asking them to have input. It's actually asking them to draft changes and new policies to input then be, be then yeah. right. to yeah. then be reviewed by the commission mm -hmm. and then recommended by the commission to the select board. Right, but our policies do affect other department heads. So I don't, I don't know why we wouldn't allow them to have input in it during the policy making. It, and this is kind of, to get to that point, um, when it came to, for example, the pilot program transfer station policy changes, input was sought from the transfer station manager because 
he was a subject matter expert as far as that was concerned. Mm -hmm. So he was brought into it for his feedback, his thoughts, to make sure that what the policy committee was coming up with was uh, an actual workable solution. Yeah, a couple of years ago when we redid the policy on use of public property, Greeny Park and what have you, when we, get, when we finished it, we sent it to the Rec Commission for their review for, okay, is what we're saying something that can actually be implemented on your property? Mm -hmm. And then? We got back, we got feedback, we made alterations, and even to this day, if, say in personnel, if the town administrator spots something in the personnel policy that really needs to be tweaked, we tweak it and bring it here. It's a lot easier to do when it's two people going, okay, are you available next Monday night at six? Then when you start looking at th the numbers here going, <coughs> okay, how many people are available on speci you know, these specific dates? It, what it does is it just adds a layer of bureaucracy that I don't think is necessary and it adds to the difficulty of getting things finished. So, th you know, the only thing I would say is the, th one of the problems there is that you too are identifying who the subject matter experts are, which probably 99% of the time <laughs> you're gonna be able to figure out just by reading it, but you never know. There could be somebody else that could say, oh, actually that has a effect in, <laughs> in my area, so I'd like to give input as, as well. So that's something we, we could pick up with this. I, I guess my main thing is, um, it sounds like you guys are very comfortable with the current working uh, relationship you have and the fact that you guys are, are, are doing this. But um, that's only if we are still, if we are still authorized to be the policy committee, Right, of assu course. assuming you are, yes. yeah. And the, you know, my thing was, I, I don't like the word bureaucracy because that, that assumes poor management. I think, I think if we manage this the right way, it won't create bureaucracy, but that's just me. I can tell you, it's no skin off my nose. <coughs> if you guys want to keep it the way it is, I mean, I, and the board wants to keep it the way it is, then that's, that's fine with me. I just. I, I think uh, there's an uh, ability to tap into people to get more knowledge involved and also to take work off your plates. And as a result, like for instance, and you guys have done a ton of work, but in, in the span of a year, how many of these policies do you think you, you turn over and adjudicate? Like? Um, just those that have been but how many given to be? us. Um, and, and they're pieces. Three, maybe four. Three, maybe four. Yeah. And how do you select the ones that you work the on? The board. The board. So when things come up with us and we say, ooh, we need to look at that. Yep. When you have typically most organizations, and I noted in here, organizations struggle with this stuff all the time because you're too busy doing your actual tasks, your own job, and nobody wants to stop and document things. But I think we've been very reactionary on how we look at things, and that's good that we're reacting to things as they come up, but it, this almost gives us the opportunity to take it up a level and say, we're gonna look at things and be more strategic and get to things before they become an issue. So if we lined up all our policies and we said, haven't looked at this one in a while, haven't looked at this one in a while, this one's one of those that is an issue like you're talking about, and then we have that five to 10. Again, no skin off my nose if, if we don't want to that particular great any thought, of this stuff that's fine with no me. that particular thought i i actually agree with yeah you know yes we have been reactive but we didn't have a policy committee before so this right, is new exactly so yeah. now it, it, i i i agree we need to get the policies stack if you will you know of policies and then the policy committee can go through and we can have the members of the board suggest which ones they think the policy committee should work on first, you know? 
So out of all of the policies that we have, which one does Matt think the policy committee works on? Which one does Bob think the policy? Which one does Larry think? Mm -hmm. it, which one does Jim or I, you know, or town administrator? Or any department heads? Are there any specific policies? Prioritize which policies should be worked on and then have the policy committee work on it. Mm -hmm. See, my question though is, like you said, you did the policy on Greeny Park and then you brought it to the Rec Commission. Right. Did you bring it to the Police or Fire Department? Because now you have parking issues yes, for the Fire actually, Department to get trucks in. Actually, yes, we, we, we brought it to the Police Department. Um, we had a different fire chief at the time and I asked because not for fire issues, but for EMT type issues, mm -hmm. and we never received a response. Lisa wasn't. And that, that Lisa I was not a, part of that. Yeah, Lisa right. wasn't a selectman then. when we had a different fire chief, Correct. so that wouldn't oh, have been okay. that last time. Yeah, you that, did that it. wasn't something that yeah. you and I worked okay. on. I, re <coughs> I remember working on a different policy. Yeah, committee. a policy regarding but different than this one. Park and yeah. But that's why I said, you know, the bookkeeper came to us and said, hey, there are some um, state regulation changes or, you know, right. some um, that we would want to incorporate into our policies to make our policies up to date. Right. So she provided them, we incorporated them, and then we brought them to the board. So, it, now, so that's once we get all the <coughs> fires put out, I personally think that we should do as I did for 20 years on the school board. Every year we do a certain portion of the policies just for a review and see if they need to be updated. When do you think the fires will be put out? Uh, well, at the, remember at the last meeting we were asked to redo the um, bylaws. bylaws. Yeah. I which th we I would think have started Monday except for the fact that quite honestly I read this and went we, we discovered there, there was a, a sentence left out of a recently adopted policy regarding um, the transfer station. And there was a correction that we needed to make to the personnel policy. Those two we made last night, they will be on the next agenda. They're in the shared folder. I, th I think what I'm getting at, and my question was almost rhetorical, because you guys have done a lot. Basically, <coughs> you know, 100% of the results we have from the policy <coughs> committee is the result of you too, right? Right. right. But uh, the fires, in a way you could see that, will constantly be putting out fires unless we expand How, however, and, and have yeah. more than two people working on it. I will, I'll look to our support. How many pages of policy do you believe that fall directly under the, the purview of the Board of Selectmen that there are? I mean, we've completely revamped the personnel policy. We did the transfer policy. Oh, I wouldn't say completely. Policy. Should be 100%. Excuse mm -hmm. me. All the policies in town fall under the purview of the Board of Selectmen. How, no, under our purview for, as you called it, adjudication. Yeah. We, neither Ms. Gagne nor I are going to, or have any expertise on police department policies. That's not necessarily true. Those come <coughs> from their right. generation right. to us, just as the to vote on, right, right, and then you adjudicate with your vote, right, right. However, just just as the um, planning board just recently adopted policies and procedures that runs, I believe, fourteen pages. They're not uh, accessible for us to edit only to look at and adopt adopt or acquiesce. Right, but if we vote not to adopt, we're essentially giving our feedback, right? You're giving feedback, but we have no, we have no jurisdiction to deny them. Right, but as, I, I guess what I'm saying is the picture is, is much greater <laughs> than, than I think. If, if we were, your original question was probably going to be like five, six, seven, eight policies. I think it's bigger than that. Well, th th that's what I'm saying. We've, pro we've probably looked at half of the policies in the past two years. Yeah, yeah. Now, one of the problems I have right now is the lack of a central location for our policies in an electronic form, yeah. in electronic editable 
form. We have PDFs. It's an issue we have with the bylaws, by the way. It's a PDF. I attempted to convert it to Word using several different converters, and I was unsuccessful. Now, when we cannot convert it to PDF, that means hand typing the whole thing, mm -hmm. which is why we did not work on it last night. Yeah. Or maybe the town breaks down and joins the 21st century and buys a... I still tell you that I don't think the paid-for version oh, okay. is going to do any better than the online version was Not able all to the do. Policies. So I, I'm, I'll just make my... I'll, I'll leave it here, you know. It's, yeah. It sounds like I'm not getting much support over here, so... But... But it... <coughs> and again, I, Is what it is. For me, I... Yeah. If this is what the board wants, yeah. absolutely. I'm yeah. just saying that when it comes to how I work, work sessions are what works for me. Yeah. The thing, one of the things that, there were a couple of things that I had issues with. Well, not issues, concerns really, not issues. Um, was the fact that if we were to have these many extra members to a commission, then we would actually need to have a quorum in order to meet, which could be a little more difficult to do so. Mm -hmm. And we were, <coughs> in fact, the JLMC is a committee that actually works on the um, safety policies. Mm -hmm. They do all the safety policy work, mm -hmm. documentation. Right. But, and then uh, having the fire chief be involved in, say, um, I don't know, some policy to do with the building department. I don't see... Buildings can burn down, though. That's, <laughs> that's actually not an not, example. Not a good not a example. Good example but, um, <laughs> or let's say the bookkeeper being involved in um, a training policy the for... Bookkeeper pays for training? That, uh, she only pays for it, but she's not going right. to have any policy. I think, Lisa, we don't have to right. go through everything here. So basically, you, you guys, you know, I'm, I'm not looking to do this exactly as I've written. I'm looking for compromise and meeting halfway, I, I would just say to the board, we can move off the topic because what they're doing, obviously they're doing important work for us, the two of them together working on these, they're comfortable with it, they're comfortable for the way. I, I'm just looking to help here with some ideas, but if, if no one's interested in my ideas, we can move on. But I'm also um, comfortable with have stepping down and having somebody else step in. You know, if anyone else is willing to come step in and work on policies, I'm more than willing to step down and do that. I'm just saying your policy would not work for me personally because I work with the work sessions. And, and vice versa. I, I would not be interested in taking your role because I could not work that way. See, it, I'd be it's different off a bridge. Exactly. So, it's different yeah, ways that people yeah. work. So yeah. your policy proposal would work for others, mm -hmm. it just would not work for me personally. Yeah. That's not to say that I wouldn't support it, it just means that I would be less <coughs> likely to be willing to participate. Plus anybody who wishes Ms. Gagne's position must be able to type at least <laughs> 20 words per minute. I type more than that. No, no, you want to make a motion or you? I don't think there's any motion to make. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds, I mean, so just Larry's, Larry's done over here. What do you and, think, uh, Larry? <laughs> We keep it the same. Like I said, we do the we do policies on a joint meeting that we have every three months. And if they're only doing three or four a year. It's not a big deal. Right, we know this, right. this year what we have to do is the bylaws and the yeah, it's bulk, not bulk, okay. item, bulk item policy. All right. Well, if nobody was want, nobody's going to make a policy. Why don't we move on? It's not really a motion, but I would just say yeah. let's keep it the way it is. So. Okay. I don't think we need a motion. I nope. don't think that's an no, not to, not But do we need, yeah. just like we did the selectman liaison assignment, do we need to reaffirm the members of the policy committee? I wouldn't think so. Nothing's changed. Yeah, I, I just keep it the way it is. Okay. It wasn't like a, an appointment or anything, right? So. Right. No. Nope. Okay, G, food pantry donation, $25 from Charlotte Center. Yeah, I think that's actually part of. That's in accordance with RSA 39-, dash, 
39 coal and something or other. It's part of the others. It, it definitely oh. kills them. See, they're in there, usually. Okay. Like those were written. Yeah, but don't you use oh no, it's not on there. I usually see it in here. Yeah. We're trying to call up the IRS. Where is it? Is, is, isn't there an RSA that we have to adopt, uh, accept the money? Yeah. yeah. Uh, 3195. To accept okay. that donation for the food okay. pantry. It's I'll make a motion under RSA 3195 to accept with gratitude the donation of $25 from Charlotte Sentner. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, H, copier, agreement addendum. Um, I, wanted <coughs> I wanted to put this in front of the board. Our copier is supposed to expire the lease agreement in June. Um, the company that we've been leasing from and all the other departments we're leasing from um, came forth and said that we could get a better deal if we were to do it a couple of months early. We did this the last time because they used their three-year contract. So the machine that we are upgrading to is pretty much what we have. It's maybe five copies a minute faster, but the cost has gone down, and it's uh, for four years this time, so it won't you know, be as much each month, um, and it covers the maintenance agreement. Um, what they normally do is they let you take the copier for three years, and if you want to buy it outright, you own it, but now you have no service contracts or anything, and to have them come out and fix it wouldn't be worth our while. So this is, uh, um, you know, I think our third time that we've leased a machine, and I'm just looking for the board's approval. I didn't want to go and do it. Last time, I think we just automatically did it, and I signed the documents, but I wanted to make sure the board was aware and that you approve. Is the, um, the new one for the fire station coming out of the same company? You know? uh, yes. Yeah, Will he that was be part of the agreement then? Well, they'll have, the fire department will have their own agreement. Oh, good. So you don't get cheap if you do it now? No, I don't think so. Okay. Okay, Jim? Do we, do we have the number? What we have here is just the addendum regarding funding and... Um, the escape clause. Non-appropriation non of funds. Right. What, when you say we're saving money, <coughs> is it um, $20 right. a year? Or it could be up to about $74, I think I... I figured it out. Okay. Less. Yeah. No, less per month. Oh, per month. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that includes the maintenance agreement, which includes all the toner and all the repairs. Right. They don't have to pay for any of that. And I'm assuming that's the big one downstairs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's the most used and it's the most important because we print the tax bills and everything on that one. Yeah. Now but is that is. That's black and white only, right? Yeah, you can scan in color, but we don't print in color. It'd okay. be too expensive. Okay. So I would move that we sign the... I think you just need to authorize either Nancy or the chairman to sign. Uh, yeah, I, I would move okay. that the chair sign the copier agreement addendum. Second. Discussion? None? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, now we'll jump down to I, memo, treasurer recommendation. Mr. Chairman, on the recommendation of the new <coughs> treasurer, I would move that we appoint Diane Morin to be the deputy treasurer. Second. Discussion? So the only thing I'll bring up is we've all learned as a board the last couple of weeks when, when it came time to uh, we're going to have a ballot without a treasurer candidate on there, we found out that under the statute, under the RSA, the deputy treasurer actually becomes the treasurer if <coughs> there is a resignation by the treasurer. So for me, for my vote, uh, you know, Diane's done an excellent job, as we see here from this memo, and previous treasurer Arthur has said as much, but it's important to me to know um, her intentions should this happen. So since Diane's here, I'll ask her, Diane, are you okay with taking over as the treasurer if, um, for some reason, and hopefully it won't happen, if the elected treasurer steps down 
for the period of time from that point until the next town meeting, are you okay becoming the treasurer? Yes. Okay, great. I'm good. And if I may just editorialize on my own motion, that's the appointment of deputy treasurer, that's for a three-year term. Right. right. Okay, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Jay, contract, landline phone contract renewal. So the phone, the phone contract is coming up, <coughs> and uh, unfortunately, they only gave us seven days to, for this contract, and the terms expired. <coughs> That's just it. Thank you. <laughs> so the, um, the renewal, I think, is in there. It's basically pretty much the same as we already have. It's with uh, Windstream slash Earthlink. And um, it's a, sounds like it's, it's going to be the same cost that we're paying now as of December, and that we get these little kickbacks on the on certain months. Like I think it's the first, the thirteenth, and the twenty-fifth month of the contract, you'll get back um, probably six hundred and eight, six hundred dollars eighty-seven cents each month. Huh? Rollbacks, roll not back. kickbacks. No, I was just going to say rollbacks. <laughs> they <are. laughs> they're, they're not kickbacks. <laughs> you might call them discounts, or <laughs> but they're not kickbacks. No. Okay. Um, Savings is good. I, I will make them, I will move the, we or the chair sign the Landline phone contract renewal. Second. Yeah, the chair would have to sign. If I, I'll have to reach back out to this person, and okay. he'll have to redo the documents, and hopefully it'll be all well, that, right. That, that's why. Yeah. Okay. I do. Okay, Lisa. Second. Any discussion? Uh, only one is. I've called in to the town hall enough times. Can we ask the town clerk? if she would do redo the menu, the present person on the menu. Yeah, I, you don't like him. <laughs> you have, uh, Can no. we go into non-public, please? <laughs> the, 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 first, the first mistake is if you know your party's three, per, three yeah, digit I heard that extension, one. Yeah. and then all the extensions are only two digit. One digit. No, all the <laughs> extensions, no. All I had this same. call with, I called Diane about that the other day. He said you have to listen to the whole message. To the whole menu. Right, but when he says three-digit extension, somebody could sit there and say, do I have to dial 014 when somebody says 14? So. See, I tried doing a 20, yeah. Yeah. 205 yeah. or whatever Everybody was it. Everybody has a three in front of their extension, so like mine four, was 14, now it's 314. So he doesn't explain that, but if you listen and go through each of the people on there, it gives the extension. Yeah, but then it says if you want the selectman's office, press 1. If you, oh, <laughs> if you want the right. town Option. clerk's office, press two. Yeah, I don't know why I'm, we have I'm not certain how the, the, that, that actually works, but it would be nice if the first thing that you get isn't a three-person extension, and now here's a list of two-digit extensions, and you go... Two-digit uh, extensions? I'm not sure where you It's only a one-digit. Yeah, there's an option number option. or there's a, a extension number. Right. So you Three have for the extension and the option could be one, two, three, four, five. If you know that I'm number five option, then you just press five and it'll go right to me. So I was waiting for the three digit and I and tried it and it didn't work. You just have to listen to it <laughs> right. and, and, you know. I thought I had to put a zero in front of, or yeah, I thought uh, I had to make it a, Okay. So, I mean, if I'm I'll, confused, I'll if you're right. confused, to people are going to get confused. Well, if you guys, if, it, if it's not clear, then you need to come up with the wording that you think is clear. I'd start by taking out the three-digit extension part. Right. Yeah, Everything just if else you know your error. party's extension. Yeah. Because like, I do know, yeah. I, I had, I actually put in the 10 or whatever it was, because it, for like the cable yeah. committee, because I think it said extension 10 on our website, and that's the other thing, we wanna make sure the website is yeah. updated with the right extensions. Yep. And it did put me to your desk, by the way. Yeah. Right, that's where it should have gone. Yeah, 10. And, and, but that wasn't a three digit, and it wasn't a one digit option, it was a two digit extension 10. Yeah. Right. 
You see what I mean? Very so confusing. I still the... used your two digit, not three one zero. I used one zero. You didn't get. You, didn't get uh, you had to have used three one zero because the ten would not have gotten you. No, it, it, it no. did. It, it can, was. <laughs> can we do this? It might might be a little uh, labor intensive, but if if you could email us what the current script says, mm -hmm. we can edit it and send it back. I can do that. Yeah, it's very, if it's confusing to us, the public is going to be real confused. Right. Okay. <laughs> I mean, this is a standard script, basically. Right, I'll but that's how know. these things work. You know, it's you yep. try them for a while, you get the feedback, and you move yep. on. If it's something, if we're paying for something that's permanent that we can't change. No, we can change th it. Exactly. Well, that's good. <coughs> <laughs> Okay. Goes, goes to show he understands what he's saying, but it's confusing. Right, he does it about. every day. Exactly. So, yeah. And you know, if you've got the script, the <laughs> what? We still have the motion as far as signing the um, agreement. Did they call it? Okay. I, th I thought Lisa second. It. No. Okay. No, Lisa I, I was the second, and then it was a discussion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Announcements. Anybody have any announcements? Okay. Then we'll get on to other business. Sign manifest, requisitions, abatements, tax credits, correspondence, and appointments. Mr. Chair, I would move that we sign the vendor manifest dated uh, 4 3 2018 in the amount of $150,751.34. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Chair, I move that we sign the new fire rescue manifest dated 4 30, 2018, in the amount of $141,896.31. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I move to sign payroll manifest for pay period March 18, 2018 to March 31st, 2018 with the pay date of 4-5-2018. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Would you leave out right there? Yep. I would move to rescind the original requisition number 3026 because of a change of venue. Second. Second. Discussion? Do we know what Which one is that? Yeah, what was it? 3026. Yep. Is it in here? No, it's already with, um, it's downstairs. What is it? Oh, for? it's right here. 3026. This was for the tickets for the movie. Yeah, movie tickets. So, oh, so okay. the date the was, uh, or the venue. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. So it's going to be in Salisbury at Vision Max if anybody's interested. I second it. Okay, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and I'll move to sign the new requisition 3026A in the amount of $300 for the Recreation Commission for movie theater tickets. Second. Discussion? This is the uh, real venue. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 I did those two. You did these. Last two. Make a motion to sign requisition. 3030 in the amount of $200 for the Recreation Commission for wetlands permit application for beach sand. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Make a motion to sign requisition 2562 in the amount of $99 for the Cable Committee for yearly renewal for Dropbox Plus. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Don't forget you still have the yep. yeah. the appointments and stuff. Right. Job description, Recreation Commission Secretary. Uh, yeah, we just, we just need to sign that, correct? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move that we appoint Ms. Julie Lemire to the Gale Library alternate trustee for a one-year term. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Chair, I would move that we appoint Janie Maggio as a Gale Library alternate trustee for a one-year term. Second. Discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, I would move that we appoint Marilyn C. Landry to the Cable Committee for a three-year term. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. There's no other announcements? Not just a reminder, we have the Seabrook drill tomorrow. Okay. For those of you that are playing. Bob, did we do the recreation job description? I think we passed over. Could I no, get those on my calendar at some point? We just need to sign it. We've already voted on it. Is it the last one? Because for some That's reason, awesome. if, if it's on my it's calendar, I can do it, but I never got them at the beginning of the year. So That's all signed. I was unfortunately, mm -hmm. I found out about them the day before. So. Okay. Yeah, we get two more we get a motion to adjourn? So moved. It's funny, time flies. <laughs> Second. Roll call vote. Aye. Aye. Do you need a roll call? Oh. Was vote. that for your adjourn? Yeah, okay. Oh, yay.